Hello, my dear precious friends. I'd like to share with you what I heard in my spirit at 8 a.m. this morning as the Holy Spirit of God was flowing in such a mighty way. The countdown to Armageddon for the doomsday clock is ticking as the darkness covers the land and the sea. Prophecy is unfolding as the desert blossoms. Four winds of four spirits are blowing and those that sow to the wind will reap the whirlwind. Change is coming and the beast is rising. You were warned. I am no longer inside looking out. I am outside looking in. As I feel in my soul and my spirit the separation from this world and the sea of chaos. The sword is filled with blood. It is rising up out of the sea of blood. The earth is ready to open her mouth to drink the blood of the innocent. What will be will be for the way has already been made. What has been written in stone cannot be changed. I am grieved within my spirit today. I have looked at the field knowing the workers are few. Yet the harvest and the reapers are coming. They are coming. For the apocalypse is knocking at the door. Can you hear the horsemen? The sound of the trumpet as the watchmen sound out the alarm. For midnight is coming. The great cry at midnight. A thief is coming. One will be taken. One will be left behind. Fill your lamps full of oil. For the bridegroom is coming in the midnight hour at a time when you were sleeping. Watch and pray, my friends. Watch and pray. I heard this very early this morning within my spirit. Knowing full well uh, what it meant that we are getting closer to war. Armageddon is near. And this enemy is not holding back. The Prince of Persia certainly is moving. And all of the main players are in place. It reminded me of a chess game. And everyone is ready to make their move. And everyone is fighting for power and control. Truly, heaven is coming closer. The veil is getting thinner because the main event is about to take place in the clouds of witnesses in heaven. are those that are outside looking in to see what has been so long prophesied by the prophets of old and everything will move fast by what the Holy Spirit of God revealed to me but if you'll pay attention to the pattern of God, because God always lays a pattern. As we see the destruction and the food prices and 
more of the homeless and people losing their jobs due to the technology of artificial humans that is coming. I continue to warn you of this. And as we see all of these things coming to pass, God will make us stronger. He will truly fill our lamps full of oil. Preparing you and I for what is coming. And I know we all can feel it. We all feel this in our spirits. We all know that God is doing a mighty work in all of us. And as we get closer, and we are moving closer, and we're going to see changes coming, changes in the heavens, in the sun, the moon, and the stars. We're going to see season changes, climate control, advanced technology that controls even the wind. We are going to see more violence, hate, because that's the hour and the power of darkness. I'm going to tell you something, church. When the angels and the Holy Spirit are no longer holding back the forces of darkness, you better know who you serve. And you better know every part of that armor because you're going to need that armor because they're going to be turned loose and there's not going to be any holding back and no restrainer to restrain them because it's their hour and the power of darkness. Didn't we see that in the days of Jesus Christ when he was on the earth and how that devil at all times wanted to take him but he could not touch him just like the two witnesses and the 144,000 the devil is not going to touch the anointed of God until they have finished their testimony, their work that God has called them to do. After all, they love not their lives unto the death. To take up your cross, what does that mean? Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. Because he knew that we were going to bear the same burden. Everything that was going to be done, that was done to him, would be done to us. We will be hated for his namesake, persecuted, reviled. We are moving in a time where it is the hour and the power of darkness. But as long as we are in the world, we are the light of the world. But there is coming a time, I promise you, church, there's coming a time, there'll be two times by what the Holy Spirit revealed to me of days of darkness. And I mean complete darkness the days of the kingdom of the beast will be days of darkness at that time when they kill those two witnesses once he kills those two witnesses the beast of hell that ascended out of hell it will be a time of darkness it will be days of darkness the second time of days of darkness well, truly, this is the first, whenever the church has gone home. Once Christ takes his bride out of here, there will be a time of darkness on the earth. Because remember, those that are left behind have to go get the oil. So there will be days of darkness when the two witnesses are killed. will be days of darkness. 
because it will be the hour and the power of darkness, just like in the days of Christ. When they wanted to take him, they could not until his work was finished, until he finished his testimony, just like the two witnesses. We are moving in a time like no other. And that's why we're seeing and suffering more attacks. Church, I'm not ignorant to Satan's devices. I've been at this all my life. And what I tell you, I tell you from experience. That devil doesn't do anything to me that I didn't already know he was going to do it beforehand. Because I've been warned by the Holy Spirit of God what he's about to do. So nothing the devil does takes me by surprise. He certainly is not coming upon me like a thief in the night. I know because I've been warned by the Holy Spirit of God. And we're going to be made stronger. That's the reason why the book of Acts tells us in the later days there's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. To prepare you, to empower you with powers from on high. To prepare you for what's next. Whatever stage we're in, God is going to prepare us for that stage. For that time. He's going to make a way. Church, it's going to get worse. So don't think that it's going to get better because it's not. We, If you only could see what I see, it, it, it always appears to me as a cylinder that is turning. It is turning. And as a Bible prophecy is fulfilled, I see the cylinder. And it's a long, narrow, gray cylinder. And it's turning. And as it turns and that Bible prophecy comes to pass, it, I can hear it clicking. As if it's locked in and there's no changing it. There's no going back. That that's the end of that. Now prepare for the next. And by what I've been seeing over the years and by the cylinder that we are close to the end of the cylinder. And I have heard enough of clicks. And every time I hear the clicking of that cylinder, I know there's no turning back. That we're locked in. Into Bible prophecy. Into destiny. The sword of destiny. I know a lot of people don't believe in predestiny. But it's not in the way that people think. Destiny is certainly uh, about what is written and what has been prophesied by the prophets. And we know is coming and cannot be changed, cannot be stopped, because it is what must be. Even Noah. Noah's going to go and he's going to build an ark and he's going to save Ham and Japheth and Sham. Now, if God wanted to destroy and stop Armageddon, he would have let Ham and Japheth drown in the sea, in the water, in the flood. But I'm going to tell you something about God that I know by the Holy Spirit of God. Everything. Ham and Japheth were saved for a destiny. They were predestined because, you see, they're going to play a role in the end-time prophecy. At any time, God could have destroyed the devil. At any time. At any time, God could destroy the the son of perdition. But everything is predestined. It's part of the game. It's all part of 
the end. And you don't want to stop the end because that's going to reveal the true power. In it, in it in any book you read, at the end is when you're going to start seeing the victory. You're going to start seeing those that look like they got away with murder are going to pay. There's going to be a time of vengeance, a time of judgment, a time of wrath. And I know people love Israel, and I certainly know that the Word tells us those that bless Israel, and I know all those scriptures, so I certainly know about Israel. But what you might not be paying attention to is God is allowing things to happen to Jerusalem because they rejected the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God allows things to happen to turn you, to bring you back to the place of repentance. Because Israel has not brought forth fruit unto God into repentance, but they're about to. They're about to. Because Israel is surrounded by their enemies. And I know everyone's looking at Iran. Oh, you just don't understand. It's not about one nation. It's about all nations moving against Jerusalem. The Middle East is coming. You know those children of uh, Abraham that he had with Hagar? They're coming. Make no mistakes about it. And they believe they have as much right to that land as Isaac. And it is a time and a time of weeping, that's for sure. Because there's going to be a lot of bloodshed. And once America is removed through political power, those that will try to restrain the United States of America, certainly, America is moving in a time of e economic woes and financial downfall and division among her own self and within her own nation. She's not going to be able to, in civil war, true, truly is coming to America and the violence that is rising because of what's coming. Church, I'm telling you, America is not going to be able to help anyone else. She's going to be too busy. Because changes are coming to America. Big changes are coming to America. America is already divided against itself. But America is not in this just for Israel. I promise you. They're in this for their own agenda. And uh, I went to church last night with my daughter. And the uh, preacher stood up and he said, We should all vote. Vote. Vote for Trump. We got. I know that he's the lesser of two evils, but we have to vote for him. Vote for the one that holds our family values and loves Israel. I nearly fell out of my chair. And I was so offended. It offended me that we have separation from church and state, but yet a preacher wants us to vote according to our conscience and vote for a man that has been so bold about the abominations and the, and the things that he has committed, but yet they see him as their savior. Are you kidding me? Boy, if you're not blinded, I don't know what is. 
And uh, Jesse, my son-in-law, asked me last night, who are you going to vote for, Mom? I said, I'm not voting. If I got to choose from the lesser evil, I'm not choosing evil. It's not in my hands anyway. It's in the hands of God, and what will be will be. What's coming is coming. And your vote's not going to stop it. And it's sad, but it's true. I cannot believe that people refuse to see the truth. Can you imagine when the sun of perdition rises up? with all the answers to the world through advanced technology and the religious leaders and the government forcing you to take the mark of the beast but not tell you it's the mark of the beast they're not going to come out there and say oh come on now y'all take this mark of the beast say so to the devil and live no they're going to come out just like social security and tell us this is the new banking system and this is the way it is either you're in or you're out we don't really care either you live or you don't live we really don't care because truly love will wax cold but what we're not going to like is when we're forced by law to make an alliance an allegiance with the system and that's what's coming. And the religious leaders. Oh, they look good on the outside, don't they? The Roman Catholic Church, all about the work of the kingdom of God. But yet they're all after their own agenda. Man lifted up above God makes me sick. How people are so quick to bow a knee down to a man and kiss his hand and call him God. Oh, you make me sick. You make me sick. And I see it every day, every day. No wonder God is ready to spit, to spew out the lukewarm church Oh, there's too many of you. You are spineless. You won't make a stand. You're afraid of persecution. You're afraid of what people are going to say about you. You want people to praise your name. Well, I tell you what, if you do, you're in the wrong business. Because if you're going to serve God, you're going to be hated. But not the lukewarm. It, it makes me sick. It really does. You got to make a choice. You can't keep riding on that fence. Make your choice. You're either in or you're out. And I tell you what, I have met some Christians in my walk with God that I look at them, and even some of my family members too, and I've looked at my family members and the Holy Spirit of God will reveal them to me and I'll be sitting over there looking at them and thinking, uh-huh, I see right now you and I are going to have a problem in the future because you're going to be against me and I'm going to be against you because I'm standing for the truth and you're not. You're the lukewarm and knowing that the enemy is using them as his puppet. It's true. It's not easy knowing what's in people. And with their lips, you know, they're just singing your little praises. I'm telling you, it makes me sick. Looking me in my face and telling me how much they love me and what a blessing I am and thanking God for me and you got the gift of the Holy Spirit. You're just the sweetest thing. And I'm looking at them and I see their teeth and they are sharp. And I'm thinking, 
Yeah. I don't hear those words of yours because I'm looking right at you and see the truth of you. It's being revealed by the power of the Holy Ghost. And I pray that what you're plotting and you're planning, God will put a hook in your jaw and turn you back to Him with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. Will you return to your first love? But we are in the last days, church. We are in the last days. And I certainly do cry for those that are lost, those that are suffering. But you can't stop what is coming. But we can pray. We can pray that God will open up their eyes and let them see the truth. But the real enemy, the real enemies of God is the world and the fleshly mind. And what both refuse to see is the truth of God. They had rather believe a lie. And while in church last night, and I sat there and the religious spirit, I hate that religious spirit. The Apostle Paul said, If a man thinks of himself to be something when he is yet nothing, he deceives his own self. Is that not the work of the devil right there, church? When we think of ourselves something to be high and lifted up, uh, to be seen of men, to blow your trumpet. This man last night in church was talking about blowing your trumpet. Are you doing anything for God? Uh, are you praying for anybody at Walmart? He's wanting people to raise up their hands. I did not raise up my hands. I'm not sounding no trumpet before me. It's not none of your business what I do with God. I don't have to come to this church and stand up here on a platform and sound my trumpet before you so you can pat me on the back. I don't want their praise. I don't want their glory. It's empty. It's void. It's useless. It is of no value to me. I'm sorry, church. I'm stirred up. I'm sick and tired of people. I'm sick and tired of this religious spirit. And it does stir up the spirit within me. I said, Lord, can I hit them? I'm asking. Can I slap them? And I didn't hear the Holy Spirit. And I said, well, maybe he didn't say anything. Maybe I could just go up to them and slap them. And I kept looking at that man. And, and I was giving him my look. That I give people that's talking Stuff that they're just babbling. I looked at him and he looked at me. And I thought, I hope and pray when the service is over. You walk back here to talk to me. Because if you do, I got some things I'm going to say to you. You might not like them. But I'm going to tell you, the man never came near me. He avoided me like the plague. No, don't even try that mess on me. I will tell you some stuff. i straighten you out real quick. And when the service was over, uh, Brother Jesse said, Boy, that was a good uh, uh, speech, wasn't it? I said, What? He said, uh, I got a lot out of what he said. 
Mom, I wanted to tell you that I, I did go to Walmart and I did pray for somebody. I said, oh, you're talking to the wrong person. I can't help you, brother. I can't lift nobody up. And I don't plan on doing it. Because like I say to Brother Preston every day, Brother Preston, I am not in the buttering up business. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't care about the religious system in this world. They can't do anything for me. I don't need them to tell me who I am in God. I don't need them to know anything that I'm doing for God. When he said, uh, raise your hand up, who's, who's called of God? Who's working for God? Man, I'm not holding my hand up. You're not moving me into pride or vanity. Oh, Lord. I came home with a look on my face, talked to my youngest son, and I said, oh, the religious spirit is certainly the lukewarm. Church, do you care what other people think about you? Do you care more about what places man can lift you up to? If that's true, then truly this world is your reward. My reward is not of this world. I don't care about what people think about me. I only care about what God thinks about me. I'm not trying to please man. My goodness, that's the last thing on my mind. I'm not trying to please anybody on this earth but my Father, my Heavenly Father. That's all I care about is God, what God sees me do. Many years ago, Brother Larry went to church with me, and he was coming out of church right there in front of all the people in the church, and they're standing out there. Uh, and uh, he lit up a cigarette, and everybody started saying, you better put that cigarette out, man. The preacher's going to be out here in a minute, and you don't want him to see you out here smoking, my brother. Larry looked at them. And he said, get behind me, Satan. I said, preacher, brother, I knew the righteous spirit was coming out. I'm going to rebuke these people. God sees me smoke, is what Brother Larry said. If I'm not concerned about what God sees me do, do you think I am concerned about what the preacher sees me do? I said, Amen, Brother Larry. Preach it. Preach that truth. But that's that religious spirit. Everybody wants to appear holy to someone else, to others. What vanity. I don't know, church. You better watch out for me. The Holy Spirit's been doing some changes in me. He has been molding this vessel, this clay. I am in the potter's hand. And he is preparing me for what is coming. And the boldness that he has given me is beyond words. And I tell you what, I ain't taking any prisoners. So let's get that cleared up from the get-go. I'm not taking any prisoners. That devil is a liar, and that religious spirit will be put under the feet of my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Whether they want to or not, they will be put under his power and his great authority. So you think on these things today, my dear precious friends. And I pray that I never see that in any of you, my dear, dear precious friends. We're not here to be lifted up. We're not here to be praised. I'm not here to be liked or disliked. I'm here for one reason. For my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, to lift him up. So you'll know what I know. That's all I'm doing, church. I want you to know what I know. I want you to love him like I love him. 
because I love him with everything that's in me. And the glory and the honor belongs to God. We are to glorify his holy name, lift him up, praise him, worship him, honor him. And it's so sad that that's what we're seeing today. No wonder the Holy Spirit of God is grieved. And the witnesses in heaven. Church, you think on these things today. I was led by the Holy Spirit of God to come out here and share with you, and I'm honest. And I'm not going to come out here, and I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. And I'm not going to come out here, and I'm not going to sugarcoat anything for you to make it a little easier for you to swallow. It's about to get real, real quick. And you better know who you serve. Like a Moses. I'm like Moses. I'm telling you... I'm turning into Moses is the way I feel. I'm telling people, who's on the Lord's side? You better get over here. Because Moses knows what's going to happen to those that's not on the Lord's side. That earth is going to open up her mouth wide and swallow you up. Because this ain't no time for playing. And you better brace for impact. Stop putting on those blinders over your eyes and try to be like the ostrich and stick your head in the sand. Well, while your head's in the sand, the rest of you is exposed for the enemy. You better be watching and praying because I tell you the truth. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you the truth from the Holy Spirit. And I don't care who likes it and who don't. And last night in the car... Uh, I was arguing with uh, Brother Jesse, and here I don't like to do that. I really don't. I try to make a point of not doing it because knowing it's not going to profit him anything or me. But, and my little granddaughter, Faith, says, Y'all stop arguing. But you know, when I'm up against a religious spirit, I cannot endure and suffer that spirit too long because it makes me sick hey even Jesus uh, made a whip and whipped them out of the temple even Jesus looked at those Pharisees those religious leaders and called them right out oh you generation of boppers he knew exactly who he was talking to didn't he he had their number and certainly we do today. We really do. And it's sad. But that boldness that the Holy Spirit of God is putting on me is really making me bold. Normally, you know, I, I be meek and humble and uh, brush it off and shake it off and go on my merry way. Now... Something's coming over me, and I'm saying, look at here, you're getting on my last nerve, and I'm about to tell you the truth. And here it is. Uh-huh. Because you see, that religious spirit doesn't like that rebuke. It doesn't want to hear, what? You're talking about me? I, I do this in the church. I do that. I, I mean, I serve in the house of God. Oh, man. Mm. let me stop church because I'll keep going about this because it just certainly I'm going to be praying this weekend church against this darkness and against this religious spirit I'm going into spiritual warfare against this thing I've had just about enough and by the power and the authority of my Lord and my Savior Jesus Christ and by the power of the blood of the Lamb of God, we're going to drive back this darkness. We're going to come against these unclean spirits because I tell you what, they're not going to take a stronghold. Now what's coming, we may not can be able to stop Bible prophecy, but we can stop 
the darkness. We can bind and go into spiritual warfare against this and win that victory. In Jesus Christ's most holy name we pray and let the church say amen and amen. Have a blessed day, church. Have a blessed and victorious day today. My time is ticking. God bless you, my dear precious friends. I love you. Keep me in your prayers. You remain in mine. Have a blessed day.